Did you hear the news? What news? After finally being released in theaters for only a few weeks, Disney has decided to pull the new Mutants, and it's now been delayed to December of 2024. Oh. Was that because how terrible it was? No! Disney CEO Bob Chappick said it was because, quote, there was a lesbian couple on screen for more than Disney's allotted 10 seconds of screen time. <sighs> wow! I'm sure removing that relationship will make the movie 10 times better when it releases in October of 2027. I'd say that New Mutants is back to being my number one anticipated movie of all time. I can hardly wait till January 2035. Me neither. Did you hear the other news? What news? Christopher Nolan just forced Warner Brothers to kill thousands of people by releasing his mediocre spy film in theaters. Oh. Oh. Hey, didn't we see Tenet? Oh. Oh. What's the last thing you remember, Danny? He said we had to run. The reason you survived is because you're a very uncommon girl. Oh, hi. Hi. I'm Sullivan. And I'm Finn. And this is... <laughs> Finn, Finn and, and Sullivan review the new mutants the and new Tenet. Mutants and Tenet. This Man. is a different thing that we're doing. This is crazy because uh, we've only been ripping off Red Letter Media's review, and now we're taking <laughs> and best of the worst, <laughs> and now we're taking it a step further. Ooh. We're combining half in the bag and, and review into one hackneyed ripoff show. That's right, New Mutants. Theater. Let's talk theaters. The new mutants. Theaters. theaters opening back up. Big deal. So excited. Great times. Yeah, it's been a little while yeah. since we saw New Mutants. And we've talked about it a fair amount. We have. Um, so we're just going to re re repeat what we said. Oh, yeah. yeah. And same with Tenet. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about Tenet uh, pretty excessively today because we saw it today. Anyway, New Mutants. <laughs> Theater's opening. <laughs> Great. What did you think of New Mutants? I... On the whole, I have very complicated feelings about the New Mutants, but I would say, on the whole, I liked it. Okay. For what it was, mm -hmm. which is bad. It gets a lot of things wrong. I, I would I, I would say most things wrong, um, but well, it gets a lot of things right. I, I said this to you, maybe while we were watching or afterwards, this is like the perfect... Uh, you know, Netflix teen drama movie. Like, it should have yes. just... It's, it's like, like so Netflix. It's like that, whatever, that kissing booth or whatever the fuck. See, if that I, had, like, superpowers and was, like, ooh, deep. I feel like it's I feel like it's a combination of, like, the kissing booth, 13 Reasons Why stuff. Yes. And, and like, Project Power and the... Oh, and okay. Bright. Yeah, 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 yeah. Directed by David Ayer. Yes, because it is very dark. I, I might be bullshitting it is a, that. I don't know if David Ayer made it I don't right. know. I don't know. No, this is a dark movie. And it does. Yeah. It's very violent. Yeah. It's pretty. For a PG 13 movie, I mean, there is some heavy blood in this movie. Sure. With I don't Her face scars. Oh, yes. Yeah. Towards the end. Crazy. Yes. Um, and, and there's some. There's some strange subject matter with their past, their traumatic past. And well, what I kind of pointed out in my. In my review. Uh, my. My written review is it's. A lot of it, for whatever reason, I I think Josh Boone, who uh, co-wrote and, and directed this film, I think he's a weirdo, because I, uh, a lot of it seems to be allegorical for, like, puberty and sexual awakening. Mm. Roberto has never had sex with a woman. He feels bad about it because of what... Because he looks like the guy who should yes. be having sex with everybody, and he has that kind of expectation placed on him. But he feels bad which is brought up in a scene. Uh, and and it's also hinted at that uh, Sam, the other guy, uh, doesn't get women and, and is like and is like that why. guy must be getting women all the time and he and he hurts himself and, yeah. and that kind of thing, which isn't sexual awakening, but it's it's teenage angst kinda of related stuff. Yes. And um, then of course the lesbian the relationship. lesbian relationship. Let's talk about that a little bit. <clears throat> yes. Um 
you know, our intro we talked about a little bit. That was a joke. Um, they're not taking it out of theaters. <laughs> um, it was really great. The lesbian relationship in this film is they, what re- lesbian relationships should it. always be. They they, they actually made a regular did it. relationship yes. that is just between two women, not j- like in the background, thrown in the background yeah. in like Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker or whatever. It was dead center, and it wasn't like dramatic. It, it was makes, just what they were, and it was fantastic. It I makes, really, really it, enjoyed that part of the movie. Just the lead actress who played the girl is so bad. The, yeah. Oh, uh, Jesus. Lou fuck. Hunt, I believe is her name. I don't know, I don't but I don't want her to ever her. get a job ever again. Blue Hunt. I believe that there is potential. You know, you got a big break here. Don't get too cocky. I've been there before. I was in a uh, Umbrella commercial. <laughs> You are so flat in your delivery of these lines, and I just, I it ruined the movie for me. It did Because she's like the, the focus of the movie. I I feel like there are enough scenes. It kind of becomes more ensemble-y. It does towards the end, which is nice. Her and conflict is the big conflict. And yeah, it's just like, and it's the big resolution at the end. Yeah. The resolution at the end, it seems like they're going to do a resolution for everybody, but That's then right. instead it just it's ends just up being her. her. The, the doctor lady who's in the trailers. This doctor is Alice Braga. Oh. Uh, I believe that's her last name. Who is playing Yeah, somebody you said she was in, in the upcoming... Soul Soria, I think is her character's name, in James Gunn's new Suicide yeah. Squad movie, which is very yeah. exciting. Um, she's not great. No, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, None of them are. Do you know what mutants are? Would anyone like to share their first time? I killed 18 men. One by one. Anya Taylor Joy, who uh, was in Split and the v- Vavitch. She's uh, not good in this movie. She's not great. She, she has, has she this, has moments. She has this Russian accent, and it is so bad. Mm-hmm. And you know, Russian accents are hard. Like, like, it's hard to not make them sound silly. Yeah, which she does. She sounds silly. She sounds ridiculous. Yeah, and it's embarrassing. Anya Taylor Joy, kind of like what Moonstar did, she uh, has like these magic powers that are a result of potential sexual abuse as a child. It was yeah, it was of, not clear. It was not literal, but it, no. I think it's a metaphorical thing. Yeah, she has these smiley face monsters, monsters. which are which are neat horror yeah, monsters. Yeah, sure. Like, Looks a lot like the Crypt TV. Like you pointed I that pointed out. that out. I don't. I don't know what the name of the guy is. And then, uh, but she, but she has these magic powers. She can go into another world. She yeah, that's cool. She escapes to her other world, and she has a puppet. Which comes, which to, comes life to life at the in end. the it's other Lockheed, world. Lockheed, who I yeah. do know. That's a character. I believe that's Kitty Pride's Kitty Pride, who Ellen Page plays in the X-Men movies, uh, has Lockheed in the comics, I believe. I could be wrong. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, man. <laughs> she, uh... <laughs> She goes through walls. She's the one who sends Wolverine. I know. Oh, okay. No one gives a shit <laughs> about what you're saying, bro. No one saw New Mutants. No one. Roberto? My girlfriend had burned her. Roberto, who has a crush on her, is like, I'm gonna save her. And it's, he's using his powers to save the woman he loves instead of killing the woman that he loves, which is his backstory, is that he killed his girlfriend because he was having he was going to have sex with her, and then he uh, lit on fire and killed her. Um, <laughs> which is really <laughs> funny, like, just thinking of what that would look like, but it is very sad. Yes, it, they, they do a good job with it, and, and uh, there's a new <laughs> horror sequence to do with it, and... Uh, and he's he's really my favorite character. Yeah, he was he was good, and he was not the worst actor ever. But Roberto is like, I'm gonna go save Anya Taylor Joy because I have a crush on her. But then he fails as well. Yes. And then Blue Hunt just saves the day by Blue Hunt to her says fear. stop to this giant bear monster, and it's like, brah, I'm not one to like love action sequences. No. In fact, I appreciate when a movie. You know, strays. Uh, you know, strays away from action sequences when when it when it works. But this is New Mutants. This is not a deep film. You're not gonna. You know, you're not gonna end your conflict by talking to the giant bear monster that's, but that's just, exactly just wrecked the entire church on a private. You know, hospital. 
you got to have the big fight scene where you stab him with a sword at the end and it slices him and he's like, oh, I'm dead. You can't just look at it and go, stop. No. Sit. I'm not scared of you anymore. And then it like fades away. Like how lame for your new mutants movie. Go fuck yourself. That's true. Brain, I was 13. I thought it was a dream. I just lost control. Maisie Williams plays the lesbian love interest character, yes. who is uh, interesting. She's got the sexual awakening thing with um, the Catholic Church. Yes. And she, there's a there's a line where she's like confessing her sins, and she's like, I masturbated, and but it never they never talk about they never bring up the Catholic Church being against her sexuality. No. And her werewolf powers could have could be a, a metaphorical yeah, representation. Yeah, it probably that, is. Because she's a werewolf, is her shtick. Yeah, and she's also Irish. She's also... I, she thought, I a, thought it was Scottish. Was it Scottish? Scottish. I, was, I thought it was kind of Irish. Scotland. You know what you're talking about? Like, I feel I'm like... I'm going to play my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like... Anyway, the <laughs> point is... The mode, right shut the fuck up. The point is... Um, she was good. <laughs> wow! We they brought that back around. around. Bro, it's so late. <laughs> it's it's 10, 10 o'clock. I spent too much time trying to process <laughs> Tenet today. That my That's brain true. is just like fried. That's true. Oh my we'll god. We'll talk about Tenet. Yeah. We have to keep talking about the new <laughs> mutants. <laughs> ah! This isn't a hospital, it's a cage. It's important we find out your power so we can help you get better. I saw something. The the finale of the third act is not great, but the setup to it is, I think, good. Yes. And the first act is is not good with the establishment of the characters. No. It's really mishandled. It's very cringy. It's very A lot cringy. of the lines and the dialogue, like many teen movies, feels like it's not written by a teenager. It's written by, like, a 40-year-old woman. Yeah. The performances are pretty cringe. Um, <laughs> the Blue Hunt is, a, is the worst one. She's Anya, so bad. Anya Taylor-Joy oh my is God. not great. She's not Anya good. Taylor Joy was the one that I knew going in, and I Same. was like, not not no. a fan. And then she was okay in Split. Like she, oh she yeah, had, like her crying thing. Yeah, I don't. It's been a while since I saw Split because it was like um, January twenty seventeen. But um, she's 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 capable of acting. She yes. has a Netflix. I don't know if it's a show or a movie coming out in October. Um, so. Check that Be out. Be on the lookout for that. Check that out right <laughs> here. here. Here's the link to Netflix. <laughs> Subscribe. Oh, fuck. Maybe Netflix will sponsor us. That's right. They're like, you can reach, you can reach 20 people. Yeah. Maybe on a good day. <laughs> if you're on a good day. Humans. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's okay, you do ten times better than I do on my Instagram That's account. True. I get two likes. Uh, would you recommend it? Yes. I think, I, I believe that movies like this and like Scoob, which are interesting, they, they, can they have about. their place. I think, it's, I think it's, it's good for people to see them. They have their place. I you should never have to pay money for these movies. Maybe not. They are not worth. It's not worth like we paid fourteen bucks. We a paid for, yeah. For, that is for the ridiculous. Movies. You should never pay those prices to watch mm -mm. like embarrassing movies. Maybe like uh, three bucks. Yeah, if like if them. it's on your Netflix subscription. Yeah, like if it, it ends up on Disney Plus. Sure. If New Mutants ends up on sure. Disney Plus. Would you recommend The New Mutants? I would not recommend The New Mutants. I think it was... It, it did certain things right. <clears throat> um, the, the, the look of the hospital was very cool. Yeah. It didn't feel much like a, like a hospital or a prison, but you still got that kind of vibe. Like, it has a swimming pool where they can hang out and, like, a lounge room, but they still feel trapped. But I hated it. I hated, like, every line of dialogue that was spoken was super cringy and just really difficult to watch. I wanted to kill myself. 
uh, in the theater while I was watching it. We can get out of this together. Let's talk about Tenet. All I have for you is a word. Tenet. It'll open the right doors. Some of the wrong ones, too. Use it carefully. Yeah, let's, um, well, we should get out of the way. Well, let, let's talk about Christopher Nolan. What, I want to talk about Christopher Nolan. People are excited about this People movie because it's a Christopher Nolan. Christopher movie. Nolan. I don't know why. I'm not a per. I'm not a fan personally. Let's just get this out of the way. How many Christopher Nolan movies have you seen? I have seen the Batman trilogy, and I've done in the various film courses I've taken. I have done many scene analyses of his movies. Which films? Interstellar, Inception, and Memento. Christopher Nolan seems to be a big spectacle guy. He wants to do something crazy. He wants to have, you know, the buildings go over and have everything be a loop. He wants to flip he over wants, an actual yes, semi He wants to mind bend you. It's it and it's just like it becomes it becomes um you know uh it's about the big picture for him. Yeah. Ed Wood. It's not about the small details, it's about the big picture. And he does it very well. He successfully tricks these audience members into saying, Oh my god, that movie was so cool because of the, the thing that was cool in it. We're not Christopher Nolan no. fans. The Dark Knight me, trilogy that means is fine. I'm not, edu I'm not educated enough about Christopher Nolan no, to be a I, fan. Nor am not. I. But I've seen my fair amount of Christopher Nolan footage. Me as well. I've seen a lot of clips. And they just don't do it for me. And I am one of the rare few who does not like The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight is among my least favorite Batman movies, mm -hmm. um, as is Batman Begins. I like The Dark Knight Rises because I think it focuses on that big picture stuff and it's kind of unashamed about it, whereas The Dark Knight is trying really hard to be smart. So yeah, we're not Christopher Nolan fans. So we kind of looked at this different than his And we fans haven't, we're would. not up to date. No! We, you know, this wasn't, like, this isn't our eighth Christopher Nolan movie. This is really our first Christopher our Nolan first movie. One. The Dark Knight yes. trilogy doesn't really count. No. But, like, Memento, The Prestige, Inception, Dunkirk. Those are, like, yes. the Christopher Nolan movies. I don't know if I'm missing any. Probably one or two. But this was our first kind of thing. And we were not even looking forward to this movie. We weren't no. going to see it. No, we, wa we, were, we were watching New Mutants. We saw the tra the trailer played before New Mutants. Yeah, and we, and and we, we said Robert Pattinson, Robert Pattinson is looks in it. epic. He looks like a Chad guy and, just chilling. And we wanted to see another movie in a the theater. Yes. And so we saw Tenet. Yes. Because we are Robert Pattinson fans. Kind of. I mean, we haven't, we've, I've only seen one of his films. Me as well. But he was so damn good in the fucking He deserved White House. probably. Oh my he's up God. there. He deserved the Oscar for the yes. White House. He's, he's one of my favorite actors. Very of last good year. actor. One of my favorite performances. He killed it. Well, I've seen too much. Well, we'll try and keep up. The movie sucks. I I disagree with that. <clears throat> and which is funny because I think I I came in with uh, you know, I came in with a more biased opinion against Christopher Nolan than you did. Yeah. And I think I liked it more than you did. <clears throat> you really did not like this movie. I hated <clears throat> almost every second of there it. There were things that I liked about this movie. But in general, I, I, w I would not, you know, I would not be rushing back to the theater to see it, nor would I really want others to spend the money on it. This movie does a lot of things right. I can't even say that. I'm lying to myself. <laughs> It does occasional things yes. right. <laughs> Christopher Nolan is a bad screenwriter. He's terrible. He should not write his movies. He should give he should give a, a writer his concept. You know, his big concept. I want to reverse time and have action sequences go in reverse and have it be a big loop. Give that to a writer and have them write your script. Because 
God, his characters are so underwritten, and you just don't give a shit about anyone. And that plays into the biggest problem with this movie, and that is the building of tension. The building of tension in this movie is non-existent. And for a, a suspense spy film, there needs to be tension. It's that's, the point. That's the whole point. You don't know what they're doing. No. The, the, the time travel things are the least of this movie's problems when it comes to confusion. Yes. There is a scene where John David Washington sits down with Michael Caine, who is only in that one scene, and he is introduced to Michael Caine, and then Michael Caine rattles off... 12 other people's names and you're in like, his, you in his slurred up. word ac accent, one of those people is in the movie. <laughs> Literally, none of the other ones matter. And then Michael Caine never shows and up. And he never either. shows up either. So you're fed. It's a case of, I feel like Christopher Nolan came up with this idea. As screenwriters have this idea about, and it's not really that true, but about this extended lore of the world they're creating. Yes. And, and thinking about all these, what was the character doing before, before the movie? That's the classic yes. example. All that. And he got so into that idea that he just threw that shit into the script. And mm -hmm. all it does is confuse the audience. There is an <clears throat> artist who makes a painting and that artist is mentioned several times by his full name over and over again, in scenes where we're supposed to be getting important information about what's going on, and... Never comes into play. He never matters. The painting barely matters. The painting barely matters. What, Apparently what do they like do a... with the painting? <clears throat> they figure out the painting is being held in, like, a in like a in uh, an airport, in yes. a free port, it's called, yeah. which is a legal thing. I, I, you know, I'm but then it's not it. actually held but it, there. But it's, it's supposed to be held there, and then they, hold, they, they do a heist where they're crashing a plane into the the airport to then when the when it activates the security measures the, everybody else evacuates the building and John David Washington and Robert Pattinson have to steal the paintings and when the security measures go off they steal paintings there's only one painting they have to steal but they steal multiple paintings and then they escape and they don't say there was a problem they don't say but then later the lady character Who's married to the bad guy? The bad yeah. guy's like, "Here's the painting. I still have it." You didn't and think like, I would leave it in the vault for no reason. And then she was like, "Well, isn't it destroyed?" And I'm like, "You didn't destroy the paintings. You stole them." I thought, and there was only <laughs> one, and it's, it's very here. Confusing. It doesn't make sense, and I have no idea what they're doing. Anytime, and this isn't anything. just us. This is a huge complaint that audiences have had. Yes. It's extremely hard to follow. The star of the movie. Robert didn't know Pattinson. what was happening. Robert Pattinson <laughs> went on record and said he had no clue what was going on while he was filming Tenet. And it shows. And it shows. It Robert shows Pattinson, in every actor. Well, but none of them understood what was going on. Robert Pattinson is great because, like, people pointed out, like, his Twilight interviews. He's like, <laughs> yes, he's he like is vampire sad. baby. And he's just, like, making fun of the movies. Robert Pattinson showcases his apathy for the film the entire time. Yes. He is casually strolling about he's just saying fun and lines he's the best part of the he's movie the because of he's that he's relatable to me yes. as somebody who also doesn't care about what's he going on he is what the audience latches on to yeah you want to crash a plane but not from the air no one's so dramatic well how big a plane that part is a little dramatic let's talk about the girl Let's talk about the girl. So her main motivation, there's a uh, semi-love interest. Yeah. She loves her son. And she and is separated from her son. Sort of. From the start of the film. Yes. We never see her and her son have a relationship no. or a bond. So that whole, you know, the emotional core of that relationship is you're not ju You're just told about it. Oh, you're just okay. told she, loves she cares son. about her son. And cool. you're hoping... To the point where, like... They're like, the, if this happens, the world is going to end. And she goes, including my son. And you're like, no and one cares. nobody cares about your we son. We don't know your son. Your son has not spoken a single he, piece he of dialogue. He has one line where he's like, I'm going to get in the car and go see daddy. And she's like, yup. And then he leaves. <laughs> and she has a personal vendetta against her husband 
for separating the two of them. Yes. Because the husband well, is husband the villain is, in yeah, the movie. He's an arms dealer of future weapons. Yes. And there's time travel stuff and and he is like the the the, the operator of Tenet. Because he yeah. has the facility where you can go into the Tenet realm. Would it be a realm? Because it's still in the human world. But No, it's not a realm. It's just walking backwards through time. It changes how you move through time. Yeah. Which um, is neat. Yes, kind It's of. a cool concept. Look, Christopher Nolan, great job with the visuals. He is a visual director. He cannot have, write, like, characters or story. Characters or story, but his <laughs> movies look good. I will give him that. They don't look amazing. No. A lot of parking <laughs> garages. A lot of parking... We were talking about gray the set design. And parking garages. They, they also... This is a nitpick, I guess. Yeah. Not really. But uh, the opera... They they not say, they opera. keep talking about how it's an opera. It's not. The stage is taken up by a symphonic orchestra, which is not how operas are put on. I'm a fucking moron. You don't have an audience <laughs> sitting around a fucking orchestra that's just it takes up the whole stage and that's an opera. That's not what it is. An opera is is opera involves stage. singing. The too. orchestra is underneath this fucking stage or like in front of it in like the the pit. Yeah. That's what it is always. You don't have the orchestra taking up the full fucking stage. Where, where are people going to act? There are a lot of set design issues where things are just kind of bland. They go yes. to boats about oh eight God. trillion so times. Boats. I gather you have an interest in a certain Russian national. Long scenes of talking where no information is communicated. Yeah. Those scenes of talking... Well, mean, information is being communicated, but there's a giant in a score... Language. With a fucking repeated, and it's okay. I'm not a sound guy. The sound in the opening bit and the sound right now for this video is complete ass. I understand that. We're not making a major motion picture. But we're not making a major motion picture. I understand sound is extremely hard. I've worked with a lot of sound equipment before. It's a very difficult job doing it on set and off set in the editing room. It's very dif difficult to mix everything together. But you have to do it. But you have to do it, do and it. you have to do it right. And this movie is so bad with its sound design and mixing, you cannot hear what they're saying. No. The music is too loud. And it's, this, it's bad music, too. That's it's the not good music. The music never fits what's no. going on. It is constant, constant. and never correct. Because Christopher Nolan thinks it builds up tension. Yeah, which it does. He if you use to the it idea correctly, that, that music in and of itself will inspire yes. the audience to feel a certain. But way. you're not going to get any tension build if you don't care about your lead characters or or not even understand what is happening because you thing. never understand what's going on. When, when on the rare occasions when the music goes away, it is to have Shut a little bit of dialogue. It's like a breath of fresh air. But then the dialogue still doesn't get communicated because it's too convoluted and yeah. complicated. There's a there's a moment in the film where um uh the bad guy is talking and he was saying a bunch of shit and it was like I'm going to stuff your balls down your throat Great and scene. Gonna, that and, was the and, that was really the only scenes like I thoroughly enjoyed. I liked the cuz there was no scene. music. He talked about like a funny kind of subject. There was some witty dialogue. Well, in yeah, there. and what I was gonna say is he's talking about this like thing, and John David Washington goes complex because he talks about he talks about cutting off the guy's nuts and shoving it into his windpipe and stopping him from breathing with his own balls, and then he goes complex, and it's and like ah, ha ha ha. But it was also like yeah, that's how I feel about the entire movie. Yeah, like I just I well, just, there's a line early in the movie. And I, I, I kind of remembered it. And it's uh, the girl when she's... This woman who appears in one scene. No, 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 Oh, that's right. I thought she was the lead character. <laughs> the lead girl. But she's just a random no. girl. She's like, uh, he's like talking about the, the, the whole tenet thing. The tenet thing is where the, everything's in reverse and it's crazy. And she literally just says, uh, you know, don't, don't think about it. <laughs> Don't try to understand it. I think that's what she said. Don't try to understand it. It's just a thing. We're trying to prevent World War Three. I'm not saying I'm getting here. No. Something worse. But you need to understand. In a, in a better that's movie. That's your whole movie. In a better movie, that wouldn't be the whole movie. 
I know, but it is. But the only thing that there is to latch onto in this movie because the characters are you're not going to latch onto the characters and the, and the plot. You have no idea what's going on. So the only thing that there is to latch onto is the lore of the time travel, right? And they which is very convoluted. In that same scene directly contradict themselves. Yes. Because yeah. the, the doctor lady who's just in that one scene says uh, they're doing a thing where they, they drop the bullet and then they catch the bullet. But she says, you're not catching the bullet. You're dropping it in reverse. And then he goes to shoot the bullet or like catch the bullet with his mm -hmm. gun. And she goes, you're not shooting the bullet in reverse. You're catching the bullet. And I'm like, no, that's not... You just said <laughs> the opposite of that yeah. is true. Inversion. Name it and pull the trigger. You're not shooting the bullet. You're catching it. Oh. Tenet. Yeah. Let down. I can't even say oh, I what? came in to the movie optimistic about it. <laughs> that's the thing. Because I didn't. I will say it was a little better than I expected it to be. It was more tolerable than I thought it would be. But in a different way, it was also worse than I thought it would be. It is the definition of a mixed bag for me. Really? I, I don't know what to say about it. There are... I feel there, that way about I the feel movie. very negatively about a, basically everything in the movie, but a part of me is like, not that bad. I literally, if we like did like a best of the worst viewing like video of it, With I spent most of the movie like, yeah, I saw you. You were kind of just, and like I think I like hit myself. How would you like to die? Old. You chose the wrong profession. Well, that from here hasn't happened yet. There are people in the future who need us. Who need a tenant. We need to save them here and now. Would you recommend Tenet? <sighs> it is a tough one. Because there's nothing good about it. I shouldn't say that. Robert Pattinson's epic. I love that. Epic laugh. <laughs> oh, God. That is tough. I'm going to say um, no on this one. But that is a no for people who don't care for Christopher Nolan. If you, I believe if you like Christopher Nolan... You yeah, Christopher going, Nolan fans, this will be... They will Christopher like Nolan this movie. movie. They will turn a blind eye to all the, you know... Uh, to everything that happens and, in the movie. Yeah, and, right. And, yeah, but they'll go with they'll Christopher Nolan. They'll turn a blind eye to the script and the actors. And the... It's Christopher Nolan. It's great. <laughs> every, every filmmaker can make a bad movie, and every filmmaker Absolutely. has made a bad movie, whether it was in their backyard or whether it played for millions of people in an IMAX theater. Today... At 2.30 p.m. Look at a movie as a movie. Just because the filmmaker's good doesn't mean the movie's good. Not always. Though sometimes it helps. Yes, sure. <laughs> it's reversing the flow of time. Doesn't us being here now mean it never happened. Well, that was Tenet. It sure was. And The New Mutants. Yeah. That one, too. What do we do now? I think if we're shamelessly ripping off the Red Letter Media series half in the bag correctly, this is the part where Rich Evans as Mr. Plinkett comes through the door and says something plot-related but funny. Um, 
You want to go talk about the fucking puppet for an hour and a half? Why? <laughs> Why your puppet, bitch? <laughs> the puppet. <laughs> Lockheed. <laughs> fucking puppet, bitch. <laughs> you fucking puppet. Uh, <laughs> new Mutants came out this week. <laughs> it's in theaters. <laughs> the new Mutants. Alright. Um, 